So for years I have struggled with my nails, keeping them long, keeping them shaped, just keeping them in a state where they wouldn't break all the time. And if you're like me and you have weak nails, brittle nails, and they just tend to crack, then this product that I'm going to review today may help you just like it's going to help me. My nails stay pretty short. And even my thumbnail, which is not too bad, it could stand to be a little bit long. And I'll walk you through the process. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Tiptonic fingernail system. We're going to go through the manual. We're going to pick out the sizes for my nails and hopefully get a little bit better sound than what I did there in the intro. Because I'm basically just playing with the flesh of my fingers and I'm not getting a lot of nail bite, which helps project the sound, get a little bit better tone and better feel overall. So let's go ahead and look at what you get sent when you receive your Tiptonic fingernail system. So what I have before me are all the things that you get when you order your Tiptonic nail system. And what we have is a file and then we have multiple different nail selections that we can choose from. And this is all based off of a sizing chart that they send you beforehand before you even put in your order because you need to know what size your nails are in order for them to send you whatever you need. And then this is the Tiptonic activator, which you actually plug in. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So we can just take the activator and plug it in just like that. And you can see the LED comes on and you know that it is on. And we're going to let that warm up here. And I already have some picks in there that I've been using for a little bit. But today I think I'm going to experiment with some other sizes and just make sure I have the perfect combination of shape and size and length so I can play to my full potential with these picks. So let's go ahead and look at the pick chart here. And we can see that there's all kinds of sizes here for like small nail beds, big nail beds, long nail beds, all kinds of stuff. So on the first page of the manual here, we can see an explanation of what the pick is, where each section lands, and also the definitions of your nail bed and the actual free nail itself. So let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so this is a nail pick. You can see that right there it is made of Delrin and the underside does have glue underneath there. Okay, but it's covered with a little piece of paper so the glue doesn't stick to other things during shipping. But that is the pick and we do have a cuticle end. This size is more likely for my thumb like so. And it's kind of hard to see, but there is a little groove underneath there where your natural nail is going to go underneath and that's going to catch on both ends. So if we can see here, we got our nail plate, which is the pink part of the nail. And then we have the free edge of the nail, the part that overhangs only. And then we have the corners of the free edge of nail must catch in the groove. So essentially what we have to do is measure where our nail is and where the edges of that nail or the free nail. And we're going to line that up with our piece of paper here. And we're going to see, we're going to check the width and the length and make sure everything's going to fit okay. Now, if you don't get this perfect, it's okay because they're going to send you multiple variations offer of the ones that you choose when you do actually order your nails. So that way, if you need it to be a little bit longer, wider, curvier, flatter, whatever, they're going to take care of you as far as all that goes. All right. So now that we've looked at the definitions of the nail and the overhang nail and all that and the edges, this is a transparent piece of paper. So you can see right through it. And this may be hard to see, but I'm going to go for my index finger here. I'm going to try and match it up to where we can see the width. So maybe like a 13 looks pretty good because the dots on the paper here, you want to make sure that that is lining up with the edge of your 
free nail. So I think 13 is pretty good. And as far as the cuticle goes, you can see that, you know, if we need to shave off a little bit on the cuticle, then we can do that. See, 13 width is good, but maybe I want to try this 13 so it's not as long. So that's how the sizing chart works. You're just going to match up your finger underneath and make sure it all fits in there. Okay. Now you can see the little line above it. That's what the actual nail is going to go out to. So as long as your edges line up, you can always reshape that nail a little bit more if you need to. All right, now, so looking back on the white piece of paper, we can see that we have shape one, A and H, which is a low and a tall. We have shape two, which is a B, I, O, which is a low H, tall H, and curved. Shape three has a C, J, and P, and they just use letters so that way they can keep track of like the different shapes and sizes. You got low H, tall H, and curved. Low H, tall H, curved. If you look at the end of your nail, you can kind of tell what the shape is right there. You can either have a really curved nail or a really flat nail. Like this one, I have chosen a pretty curved fingernail, but I may try a flatter one today just to see how that works out. All right, so let's go back to the manual here. And we can see that we do have the activator components. You got the charger and the actual activator itself. So you can plug that in. And like I said, my thumbnail is pretty short right now. I'm gonna try out this D17, which is pretty flat. Let's remind myself what this means here. So you can see we got the 17s right here. And we got a D17. So I have a shape four, low, and then it's 17. So that's gonna fit over my nail right there. And what you wanna try and do is put the nail in the groove and then, and then bring it down, okay? Now, what I'm noticing is this free part of my nail is not quite long enough to catch underneath that groove. And it's also not really catching on the other side as well. So let's look at another, let's dump out the 17s here. And 17K is a tall H, okay? And that's actually fitting a little bit more on my nail right there, which I'm pretty sure is what I already have selected that's warming up in the activator. But you just wanna make sure that both edges of your free nail are lining up with the groove underneath the nail. So I'm pretty sure I have 17K picked out for that. But let's look at this other one here, which is a 15K. So this one is not as wide. And that's clearly not really going to fit. As you can see, there's the edge of my nail. And my free nail is sticking out. So the 15 is not wide enough for that. And we also have a 15Q, which is more curved. And let me make sure... Yeah, Q is curved. So you can see that is way more curved than the 15K. Well, the 15K is pretty curved as well. The 15K is a tall H, but the 15Q is way more curvier. So let me hold these up here so you can see them. You can see they're pretty curved right there. And then the 17D... This is a lot flatter if you compare the two. See, this one's curved and this one's flat. All right. So we got 15 and 17 for those. All right. So let's go ahead and open up the activator here. And it is a little warm. So you'll, you'll be fine with that. So what we're going to do is actually twist the top here. And it's going to make an opening in the slot where the pick is. You're just going to slide it out just like that. Now I have done some shaping on this with the uh, file right here. And this one is a 17Q, which means this was a curved one. If you look at the shape of my nail, it's fairly curved. So it's not gonna be the best to use a flat pick. I need to have a curved pick to, to form the shape of my nail right there. So I'm just going to angle it in 
and then that's going to push down just like that. So with the curve, it's going to cover the whole bed of the nail. And you really don't have to push down really hard. It's going to stay on there really good. So now what I did do by shaping this, it was sticking out on the side of the nail a little too much. And I felt like it was catching the string in a weird way. So I angled it off just a little bit. So let me do some playing so you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so there's that. So that is my thumbnail. All right, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the nails now and make sure I have those fitting pretty well. So how I have the activator set up, I go thumb, index, middle, and ring. And last night I chose a different ring shape. So I'm gonna try that out. Um, let's go ahead and spin this. And we're gonna dump it out. This one is a 13J. Um, so 13J is this row, and we can see that it's a tall H. Let me see if I have a 13C, and it may be too flat, but I'm not sure. Let's just see what we have. So 13B is pretty long, and it's also very curvy. Okay, as you can see that. So this is gonna stick out of the finger way too much. And I just want the nail to be able to hit a straight edge. So let's separate those out. 13D, uh, so 13D is based off of shape four. And once again, this is pretty long. So I think that's why I chose the one I did. Um, 13J is good. And also 13P, 13P is not as curved. And it looks like that. So let's experiment with that one before I put on my other one here. Let's see how that looks. So I wanna put this in the groove and I wanna flatten it down just like that. And what you wanna do, you wanna kinda of pull up on the, on the tip of the nail and if it's catching that groove, then you know you have a good fit. If it's not catching, if it's coming up too easy, then you know your nail really isn't in there very well. But you can see how much it's sticking up over the finger. And that's about how much you want. So that actually looks pretty good. Um, it's not gonna stay on my finger right now because I need to shape it. And also the cuticle may be a little bit long, so that's where the fingernail file will come into play where I can, I can bring back that cuticle nail a little bit more. So 13P, I like that. The other one is a 13J, which is still tall. Maybe it's just not, yeah. So I see the difference here. So 13J is not as curved on the top, it's a little flatter. What I was finding is the more curved the top of the nail is, it may strike the next string when you're doing picking. And that's not necessarily what you want. So the flatter it is, the more it's going to stay down to the bed of your nail. So this is already warm. So let's go ahead and put this on. Like so. And that's gonna stick on like that. So 13J. Yeah, so it's tall H. You can see how that fits on the finger there. So it doesn't protrude out or anything. And it looks pretty good. So I have done some shaping on this so it just naturally curves down. So now I got a nice index finger pick.
All right, so for this one, I kind of shaved it off on the top because I felt like it was a little too tall. So let's go ahead and put this on. And I feel like this one's a curved one as well. And the cuticle on this one may be a little bit long because I can feel it touching my skin a little bit. So I may need to take that off and just kind of file around the edge a little bit. But for now, this is perfectly fine. So you can see that we got the nail coming in right there. It's not too tall, but that works really good. So let's go ahead and check that one out. And what I wanted to experiment with today was my actual ring finger. I feel like the other one is fine, but it's a little too pointy. And it's not bad, but I did have to shape it a little bit. And this one is a 12P. Yeah, so that's a 12 curved. But this other one is a 13C. So it's a little bit wider than the 12, but it's actually a little bit flatter. So there's that. So I'm actually going to put this one on and then I'm going to maybe shape it up a little bit. So you can see I don't have a lot of nail there, but as it grows out, maybe in like another week, it'll be perfect. So I'm just going to fit this underneath the groove like so, and then smash it down. And I'm going to pull up and just make sure it's catching there, which it is. And I think I like this one a little bit better because it is more flat. So there's that one. So now I have a full set of nails. I don't use one on my pinky because I don't really need one on my pinky. All right, so let's go ahead and play with this one now. Yeah, what I'm noticing about my thumbnail is sometimes that edge right there tends to catch on the string. And I'm not too fond of that. So what I'm going to do is let's go in here and let's find a little bit bigger size. Because we got some 15s and 17s. We have a 15 and a 16. Let's look in the 15s and 16s and see if we can find a size that is... Not as wide, but that still fits the nail pretty good. All right, so what we do to take the nail off is we just take it by the cuticle end and we just start peeling it off. And the glue will come off. And obviously the glue is still on there, but it doesn't leave any residue and it doesn't hurt your nail at all. So that's great. So I'm going to put this back into the activator because that's where you store the nail once you're done. And it doesn't always have to be plugged in all the time, but that's just a good place to keep them. So 16J, this is not quite as wide as the 17, but it is a tall. So we can see on the paper here that not quite as wide as the 17, 
And we could go like one of the D, K, or Q, so it's a little bit longer. But 16 is pretty short compared to my nail currently. So let's see how this matches up with the groove. And it doesn't quite cover the full nail bed. I probably need some more nail edge right there, so because that doesn't give me a lot of groove to work with on that side. But it's not too bad. 16J, 16P is more curved. Um, yeah, P is curved. So if J is tall, then then P is curved. Okay, that one's not too bad. 15 are going to be a little shorter as well, which may not work. Yeah, I think that's why I went with the 17, just because it is a little bit wider. 15P is definitely not going to work. And then this is a 16C, which is a low, which isn't really going to follow the shape of my nail that much. So 16J is the tall, which is still fairly flat on top. You can see that it does curve down a little bit more right there. All right, so there's the 16s. Let me find where a 17 is. All right, here's my 17s, a 15K. That's not gonna work. Yeah, it's not wide enough. 15Q is curved. And that's actually not too bad. But the issue is, is it going to be wide enough to fit over my nail? And it doesn't reach on the other side. I do like that shape though. The Q is a curved 17K is a tall H. And I currently have a 17Q. So it's either a Q or a K is what I'm looking at. Because here's a 17D, which is a shape four low. And that's not going to be curved enough. My nail's not going to be able to catch in there. So let's just experiment with the 17K and see if that's going to be a little bit better for what I need. So I'm going to put this in the activator. That's going to be in slot two. So slot one is my current fingernail selection. And then slot two is going to be the second option. So I'm going to... Go ahead and turn off the camera and I'll be back when this thing warms up, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take the nail out of the activator and see how it fits. So we're gonna go to slot two and dump it out. All right, so just to remind you, this is 17K, which is a tall H. So it's this shape and it's a tall H. So we're gonna put it on the groove here and then smash that down. And it looks pretty good. So let's use this on the acoustic and see what it sounds like. Here's this angle right here. You can see how the nails fit underneath the strings. So I just have to make sure that this edge right here 
doesn't catch on a string, like if I get at a weird angle. As long as I keep it, you know, at a good 45 degree angle right here. Should be fine. I am seeing that this one is wanting to pull up just a little bit. And maybe that's because I don't have enough nail underneath the groove. It is not staying down. Um, I'm going to have to watch that a little bit. But I think overall, they work really well. Definitely a lot better than using my natural nails, which, like I said before, tend to break. And it's just not always the best. See, my nail is wanting to come up and it's just not in the groove. So on my, on my ring finger, I may need to go back and put the more curved one on just so it does fit the shape of the nail a little bit better. Because if it doesn't fit the shape of the nail, then it's not gonna work. So it is a little bit curved, but it's not too bad, so. Alright guys, so that is how you use the Tiptonic nail system to enhance the natural sound of your nails. And you can get by if you do break a nail and you feel like you need to play a show last minute. The glue on here sticks pretty well. Just make sure that you're matching up the shape of your nail so that way it does cover the whole nail bed and you're not left with something that's not going to work exactly for what you need. But as you can see, they do send you a lot of variations based off of your initial nail choice. So don't worry about getting it just right because they will give you some variations on that. So thanks guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe down below and click the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And I'm Dr. McFarland. I'll see you in the next video. Keep rocking.